Welcome to About the Winelands. In this show, we will be chatting to leaders, influencers, wine producers, restaurants, and other role players. Tune in every Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday for your latest episodes. You will find us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram TV, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts. Good day, everyone, and welcome back to About the Winelands. Today, we're talking to um, Dr. Peter Edley Smith of the Cape Wine Lovers Society. Dr. Peter, welcome to About the Winelands. Well, thank you, Will, for inviting me to have a chat with you today. No, it's our pleasure. Um, I'm very interested in what you guys are doing. Tell us a bit um, about yourself and you know how you started uh, the Cape Wine Lovers Society. You sound British to me. Yes, you're absolutely right. I'm born and bred English, Mm -hmm. but I came to South Africa in 2010 for a gap year. In fact, I came here to train as a game ranger. And I spent a year doing that. And it wasn't until seven years ago that I bought my house. And then I got residency here, having fallen in love with Cape Town, literally the first weekend I arrived. I looked for a passion, I looked for something to occupy myself and interest myself here. And I have two passions that really come together. One is learning and one is wine. And in England, I was a member of a very varied wine tasting group from employed, unemployed, from plumber to electrician, to accountant, to judge. And when I settled down here in Cape Town, I looked for an equivalent wine tasting group. And would you believe me, there really wasn't anything. Wow. I could go to a tasting with a retailer. I was sport for choice with wine estates. I could go and sit in the classroom, which I've done a lot of. We'll come on to that in a moment. I could join a dining club where wines were presented, but there was nowhere where I could have a fun evening with like people to taste wines. And that was what led me three years ago to set up the Cape Wine Lovers Society. You've been going for three years already, wow. I I set it up three years ago. I thought, well, if I can't find one, I'll make one. So I set up the www katewinelover.co.za website. I set up the Kate Wine Lover Society on Facebook and I basically just grew it from there. Are you guys just an informal, the, informal meeting, informal club or are you, are you actually, do you have a like, legal structure around this? No, no there's, no, there's no legal structure, there's no membership fee. It's very much and it's always been my aim to be as open to as many people as possible, to be as accessible to as many people as possible. You know, wine for me has, has no barriers and everyone should have the chance to enjoy and learn about. And so I, it's just grown organically. Oh, that's awesome. So I see you usually have um, two meetings a month. Where do you guys usually meet and what happens at these meetings? Well, well yes, ju- just a little bit before then. Now, for instance, uh, I've visited 251 estates. I've written 350 articles for the website. Oh. And I've got a social media following of over 6,000 from 140 countries. So wow, the reach is amazing how the reach extends through our electronic ether. Now, to come to your question on on meetings, obviously now during lockdown, we cannot get together and meet, but I do a range of meetings, my my basic tasting meetings, and just explaining how do you go about tasting a glass of wine? What do you look for in a white wine? What do you look for in a red wine? What is the difference, for example, between a Sauvignon Blanc and a Chardonnay and a Chenin Blanc. And these meetings take place many in, in Weinberg in the southern suburbs where I live, but I also will travel 
to different places in the Western Cape. I, I've done some what I call Dr. Peter Masterclass tastings with fellow students, with people who want to go to a higher level. And I go to Somerset West, where you are. I go to Fanshuk, I go to Stellenbosch, I go to Paul, I go to the northern suburbs. It, it, it's a fun way to get out and be accessible to people. Awesome. How many people actually, um, um, your, your, your usual meeting, how many people would attend? Anything from about 10 to 20, with one bottle of wine each, above about 18, 20, it gets very difficult to give people a decent pouring. So mm -hmm. it's also good to keep them reasonably small and friendly. And we, 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 they're very informal. I think people learn best, they enjoy most when it's informal. There's no such thing as a stupid question. And I normally will have eight to 10 wines perhaps. And we'll go through them in a number of flights. There's often a theme. It might be region, style, a country, a variety. I mix and match really to make them varied and educational and fun. Well, that's interesting. Do you um, do, in other words, you don't just do South African wines, you do other countries as well? No, a few months ago, I did something which I think has probably never been done here before. I did a, a tasting of African wines. Wow. And I had wines from Malawi, from Mozambique, from Kenya, from Morocco. That's quite an, that must have been quite an education because, you know, you mentioned those places and I don't really um, associate wines with any of those regions. Maybe Morocco because they used to be a French colony. I know they had the wine industry years ago, um, um, but I didn't realize it was still existing. Anymore. Yes, in, in Kenya, the wine estate there, the Rift Valley wine estate is on the equator and most wine theorists will say you cannot grow wine anywhere near the equator, anywhere between sort of 30 degrees north and south. So um, yourself, you know, um, um, this, this sounds very interesting. Um, tell us a bit more about your own wine experience and um, your education and, you know, um, the stuff that you bring to people. Well, my background it was as an academic. Dr. Peter is uh, my PhD that I got from Cambridge University in England. I studied applied biology. So I've always been interested living up in the countryside in England with the outdoors and growing things and producing things. And so my, my experience in education, it's, it's really quite interesting because everything has come together to map so well together. At the time at which I was looking for a tasting group and set up my own one, I was studying my studies. And at that time, I was starting to visit the wine estates. And I was starting to think about holding my own tasting. So everything really came together. For my experience wise, I've now visited, as I said, 250 South African wine estates nearly, and written on the website, to quite detailed visit reviews, 75 in, in Stellenbosch, for example, wow. 25 in, in, in Franschuk, a similar number in the Helderberg around Somerset West. And I started my education of all things. I'm in Ultra Liquors in Weinberg. I found this A5 flyer introduction to South African wine course held by the Cape Wine Academy uh -huh. and it was an evening uh, course and I thought that looks interesting let me go and do that in fact my wife and I did that now wife and I did that and it wasn't just sit around and drink wine it was very educational there was even a little tick test at the end so I took that course and I then thought, well, let's go to the next level, which is the certificate course, which is over, it was held over six months or so, seven, eight different sessions of lectures and a, a three-hour theory exam and a 
tasting exam at the end, South African wines, and passion grew and grew. And I went to the next level, which was the diploma course, where you look at wines of the world. And that was four pretty intensive modules over two years. Wow. Meanwhile, uh, I'm now starting a course with the second big training provider, the One Spirits Education Trust. I'm sure your listeners have heard of WSET. Mm -hmm. And I, I took level three and i'm now halfway through level four diploma which is their highest course oh that's and, amazing you know, the, the funny thing about wine is the more you know the less you know i've done courses at stellenbosch university as well on food and wine pairing on uh, evaluation judging of wine i've done the garage yeast the short course in uh, winemaking i haven't made wine yet but I'm absolutely fascinated by this subject. There is so much to learn and everything is changing as well. And it, it just really enthusiasms me so much. That's so awesome. Are you planning to make your own wine at some stage? I would love to. I would even love to have my own vineyard one day. You know, we all have dreams, but <laughs> uh, yes, absolutely. Well, that's wonderful. I see also on your website that you actually write wines. You, you give like a, a Dr. Peter writing. So tell us a bit more. How do you do that and your criteria you use for your writings and what's your plan with that? Now, thanks, Will, for asking that. For each wine tasting, for, for the educational courses, for some of the accommodation I've stayed at, I, it, it's like a little headline score out of five. And the way I work it for wines is there's a fairly common scoring method for wines. There's the, there's the 100 point scale, but much more simpler is a 20 point scale. And you assess a wine for its appearance, the sight, for its nose, the smell, and the palate, the taste. And you give three, seven, and 10 points respectively. And so when I taste individual wines in wine estates, I do that rating. And then when I come to write up that visit, I then look across the wines I've tasted and I sort of form a consensus in my own mind to give that score out of five for the wine. And then for the experience, it's a little bit wider. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I think about how, e how easy is it to find the wine estate? What is the tasting room like? what was the, the presentation of the wines like, the staff, and, and so on. So that gives me a headline score for experience. And I, I, this is something I want to develop, and, and certainly for any of the wine estates listening now, I'm going to develop this into a more, well, it's subjective already, but, but a more useful system for the wine estates. So they can then start to benchmark where they are in relation to others, where they are today perhaps as to where they were a while ago. And that's a project that I've got in hand at the moment. So Joe, your general feeling on that is right. You visited all these estates and you've been in South Africa since 2010. So over the last 10 years, how would you say the general improvement in that experience has that, has that been, how, do you, how would you write that? I think one of the really interesting things is just how patchy the experience and the estate and the wine can be. There are some wine estates, the iconic big name wine estates that have fantastic wines and just a fantastic tasting experience. And there are others that may have superb wines but the tasting experience is very, very weak. And mm. it applies the other way around. Some of the best tastings I've had have been with estates that are little known. Maybe don't have the high four and a half, five star wines. And it, it, it's something that I feel very passionate about. I have a background in corporate services and hospitality. And, you know, there are some estates that are really shining a light here but, but there are others that aren't and i think during this time of lockdown it's a good time i think many people are now looking inwards and starting to reflect 
and trying to see how they can improve and develop. So that's interesting, you know, um, I've, I've noticed that, um, um, and, and you're saying about the hospitality industry, I think a big, and, and I, would, I want to ask you about this, I think one of the big issues is training for people that are actually providing the experience, because sometimes when you go out to, this, the, the problem used to be at hotels in, in, in Cape Town, you know, you get, you get like a, a five-star hotel that has a good restaurant, but then when you ask a question to the waiter or whatever, that person that works there doesn't have the same, uh, the, the, the disparity between the income level of the person working there and the person dining there or, or visiting is so huge and it, it, they don't really have the background or, or, and they don't get the training but to actually know they haven't even tasted the food they're serving or in this case maybe the wine they're serving. Do you find you know, that, that educating your, your staff at the wine estate is maybe the, the, the main problem or, or the main ingredient for improvement? Ha hundred percent there's a book that came out in the 90s i did an mba and it was one of the books that we were encouraged to read by the boss of scandinavian airlines it was called moments of truth and he found out that the his members of staff who had most contact with the customer were the least trained the least paid and the least empowered no one in an airline sees the pilot or the engineers, or the really important people. But they see the check-in staff who at moments of crisis have to manage with mm -hmm. very little training and very little empowerment and very little pay. And I see this in many of the tasting rooms here. And I think it's very short-sighted. And this is one of the other things that I think will help the wine estates in particular, is train their people better, Pay them more, pay them a percentage. There are all sorts of ways of doing this. And I, I, I think that your, your analysis from that hotel industry is absolutely right. I entirely agree. That's amazing. So uh, talking about hotels, and I, I see you also have accommodation ratings. So do you actually stay on, have you gone and stayed in places in the Winelands um, and do your ratings that way? Or how do you, how do, you do that? Yes, I mean, that, that, that's, you know, I started in Cape Town, where I live, I did all the Constantia Valley wine estates, and then moved further afield, moved, you know, out to Durbanville, and then to Stellenbosch, and so on, and it, you know, it, a day's trip, to, if you're going to Cape Agullas, or even the Arda Valley, can be quite a long time, so mm. I thought for people reading, for people, a lot of people read the Cape Wine Arbor Society website, from abroad, they do their research because they could search by wine estate, they could search by region, they can search by rating. And so I, I started to try and pick, you know, somewhere in each of the main regions and start to build up a, a sort of related resource for people. You know, where might they stay? Where's a good place? And I use a similar process for that too. Just a quick interruption. But I do need to remind you that we are currently in a very difficult time. The South African government has set up a fund where businesses and individuals can donate to support our country through this crisis. Go to the website now and add your small donation. www.solidarityfund.co.za Please join us all in the fight against COVID-19. That is at www dot solidarity fund dot co dot za now let's get on with the show okay well my question would be then you know if you're a producer or a wine business obviously your 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 um your, your blog or your website is fairly widely read now and um, it would be great for for actually for a, a, a wine estate or even for a, for any wine business to or any any even our accommodation business in the wine and to get your attention for a review. So how did they go about if somebody wants to get a review from your mention on your website, is there a process or uh, no? Well, the, the, the best way, whether it's the www.kateWineLover.co.za or Kate Wine Lover Society on Facebook or hashtag Kate Wine Lover on Insta, all of those will have an about section that gives my email address 
peter at katewinelover.co.za and my phone number. And the best thing to do is, is just to send me an email or WhatsApp or a message on, on Facebook or Insta and I'll, I'll get back to people. Okay, that's interesting. So um, I mean, we'll publish all these links, obviously, in the description of, of you know of the show as well. Um, I've seen recently that you've been very active on Facebook and doing daily wine tasting. Obviously, using the lock, lockdown time to speak to people. Um, can you share a bit of this experience? Because I, it looks like people are really enjoying that. Y yes, and it, it, it's a new project, and it's been very successful. Well over three and a half thousand views so far. Today, I think I'm on live tasting number 33. It's daily at 6 p.m. In, in South Africa, uh, Monday to Saturday. And I could see, it, I, I was supposed to be in Vietnam at the end of March on holiday to see the Grand Prix. Oh my word. The holiday, I, I was married in, on Robin Island this year, one of the Valentine couples to get married there. And my wife and I were going to go to Vietnam on holiday. And of course, that was when the, the sort of epicenter of the coronavirus, the COVID-19 virus, was in China. So we were watching, you know, I was watching quite carefully how things were developing and, and the measures countries were taking. And as it moved through Europe, through Italy, to, to the UK, and, and then obviously here, it was obvious that there was going to be lockdown here. And once we got close, I thought, well, let me bring the wines to the consumer, to the wine enthusiast, to the drinker, when they cannot bring the wines to you. So before we even locked down, I started my first daily live tasting. Okay. And it, it's really taken off. I think a lot of wine estates have now copied the idea or they've seen it from elsewhere. And I'm really proud of that privileged space, if you like, to be able to showcase these amazing South African wines to people. And people are not just viewing from South Africa. I've had people from Latvia and Denmark and Korea and America and all over the place watching. And what I do is each day I will take a wine or maybe a couple of wines to compare and talk about the estate, talk about how the wine is made, taste the wine live. And then each week now, I'm trying to pick up a, a little theme to hold it together. So it isn't just this wine, what's it like, stop. So last week I went into some detail how to taste a white and red wine. This week I'm looking at how is wine classified in South Africa? What are the regions? How do they fit together? What does it all mean? So it seems to be very, very popular. And I think it will grow in popularity. Just a question from my side is, do you have enough wine for a long lockdown? Yeah, I'm, I'm quite lucky I've got a lot of wine. <laughs> I, I, I feel for these people, I see these posts on the Facebook group saying, I'm running out of wine, what do I do? Let's hope things will be eased a little bit sooner to help our, our industry and to help you know those who enjoy wine. So, you know, the coronavirus has forced all of us to rethink our business models or organization models, or in your case, uh, what should I say, a society or a club model. Um, do you have any changes or new ideas in mind? And also on that note, do you have any ideas maybe for um, our, our wine business in mind, what they could do? in um, you know, uh, in our new world that we're living in? I think one of the things that we must do is, is, is just recognize how many people are in the same boat. It, it's yeah. from consumers, it's retailers, it's wholesalers, it's the producers, the wine estates, and then all the add-on staff. And I, I was watching, for instance, this morning, a Zoom broadcast by the Cap Classic Association. And one of the things that they were saying, which I think is a, is a really good message, is we must collaborate. We cannot be against each other. Now is a time I think we've all got to help each other and pull together and 
accept each other's differences and struggles and let's give each other the best help we can and support each other. And that can happen in so many ways. Yeah, I agree with that. So your wine journey has been quite interesting. Um, what is the most important thing that you've learned from your wine journey? That's a very open question, Will, and a really <laughs> interesting one to think about. Um, I, I think for me, and you know, I hold a lot of tastings and I meet a lot of people, and I think it's about don't be too snobbish about wine. You know, it, it, I do a lot of blind tastings as well, and that's a great leveler when yeah. you you know it is a great leveler and it's fun and it's exciting and there's so much to learn about i mean every day i learn something yesterday and i never knew this i didn't know that the cork bark tree the cork tree that produces the bark for our wine corks and the oak tree that we put wine in barrels to mature or to ferment in those two trees are related i never knew that Wow, I never knew that either. So, you just taught me something. No, it, it, it's fascinating. And uh, yeah, it's, it's I, I think, not to be stomach. I mean, one of my very first wine tastings when I was just teaching the basics of white wine. And I had four wines then. And I, I had a Chardonnay and a Chenin Blanc and a Sauvignon Blanc. And I had a Givert's Tremina. And I had someone there who hadn't even heard of Gewurz Tremina, hadn't even tasted it. And afterwards, she came up to me and said, you know, this is so exciting. I never tasted this. This is, this is something I'm going to buy. I'm going to see who makes it. I'm going to go and look and taste it. And that, for me, is the essence of wine, is, is not to be too uptight about it. Mm. Just enjoy it. And I think that's probably one of the most important things that I've learned from my wine journey. Well, amazing. So on that note, can you give us your very own wine quote or your favorite wine quote? Wow. I don't know if you ask everybody this, but I... <laughs> I, I, I do, actually. Yes. I didn't Google this. Did, I don't know. Do you ask everybody? I do. And uh, you're right. Most people have something that they've read somewhere else. So if you have something of your own, that would be, fa that would be fantastic. Well, no, I didn't Google it. And I, I thought about it. And I'm going to adapt a quote. And there's a nice story behind this. Uh, I, I came here to train as a nature guide. And in the first six months, a very intensive guide course. And I found myself with one of the colleagues of my course in Limpopo. And he said, come to our farm. Come and have a look. And I didn't know at the time, but it was his grandfather's birthday. And I sat with, this, with his grandfather and we were chatting away. And he said something to me that has really captivated me ever since. And the phrase he used was, a stranger is a friend I've never met. Now, I thought it was just bright talk, but I have seen it elsewhere since. Mm. And I think if I adapt that, I would say... You know, a stranger wine is a friend I've never met. And it's about keep your eyes open. Don't be close. We all tend to go to the same place in the same store and buy the same pinotage or the same Chardonnay from this estate. And there's such diversity and so, so many interesting wines. And that stranger wine, take a risk. You never know. It could end up your best friend. So it's Adapting that phrase, I think, is probably my wine quote. That's amazing. Dr. Peter, it's been um, an absolute pleasure to be talking to you. Like I said, I'll put all your links and, and everything um, in the description. And um, thanks for taking the time. And, um, yeah, maybe we can um, talk again at a later stage and do a wine tasting online or whatever. But uh, this, is, this has been fantastic. Thank you. No, thank you, Will, very much. And a, a, a thank you to anyone who's listening. Uh, it, it's tough times at the moment. We will get through this. And yes, please follow me. I know you're going to publish the, the, the links on social media. But thank you for the time. I've really enjoyed chatting with you. And I'm sure people listening will be enjoying too. So thank you so much. And stay safe and enjoy your wine. Thank you for supporting our show. If you would like to get more exposure for your business, 
please have a look at our sponsorship options. Thanks again for supporting About the Winelands. Please follow us on YouTube and on our social media channels. All details and links are in the description.